Comrades, can I thank you for inviting our organisation to your conference? Can I thank your President for his kind words uh, about myself this morning? But most of all, can I thank you for being a fighting trade union and proving that working class fight is not dead? Let's not forget that after Thatcher's government took us on, the trade union movement was supposed to be gone forever. No more militancy, no more struggle. Congratulations, comrade, for proving them wrong. And it's a pleasure to be in a conference of the labor movement where socialism and nationalization are not dirty words. We're fighting for justice, for truth, is not a dirty word. It's conferences like this that have kept people like myself going for 32 years. Because people say, people say, why don't you move on? Why don't you forget? It was a long time ago. Well, 32 years ago, I was a Derbyshire miner. All I wanted was the right to work. Something David Cameron tells us we should all aspire to. I was fighting for the right to work. In response to that fight, I received a criminal record, a broken head, severe concussion, and bail conditions that were the most prohibitive in the Western world. That's why I'm fighting for justice. I carry that criminal conviction to this day. I've still got the scar on the back of my head where a copper smashed the bag of it in. I was charged with threatening behavior and watching and besetting. An act from the 1600s, which means looking at. I wasn't alone, 11,000 of us were charged, were given criminal records. 7,000 of us received hospital treatment or medical aid for injuries sustained in fighting for our jobs. The culmination, if you like, of our strike was the so-called Battle of Orgreave. 32 years ago, this coming Saturday, we've had a birthday card made to commemorate it. Now, if you'd gone home that evening, 32 years ago, switched on the BBC, that left-wing organization that David Cameron doesn't like, you would have seen that young miners in the teens woke up one sunny morning, decided to put on the best trainers, the best pair of shorts, and a clean T-shirt, and go out and attack some heavily armed riot police who just happened to be parading around a field in South Yorkshire. Ten years later, the BBC apologised for that lie, but that lie stuck. We were called the enemy within by Margaret Thatcher. Incidentally, who, when she died, her money's in some offshore trust, so her, the people who inherit it don't pay tax on it. But we were the enemy within because we wanted the right to work. At Orgreave, 95 comrades were framed, beaten to a pulp and charged with riot, an offence that carried life imprisonment. They could still be eating porridge to this day. The case collapsed when it, found, when it was found that the majority of police statements were identical, that police had colluded, that some of the arresting officers weren't even present when the picket was arrested. The IPCC itself, when it conducted its investigation, found that police officers had committed perjury. Was anybody brought to justice? No. Those 95 comrades faced a year of hell. Some of them were held in Armley Jail, in maximum security wings, with sex offenders, with murderers and rapists 
purely for fighting for the right to work. And we're told we should forget and move on. Comrades, I've only got a few minutes and I don't want to take too much time away from John. But we're campaigning for a public inquiry similar to the magnificent one that the Hillsborough victims fought for and achieved and finally achieved justice. Well, that's not the end of it, I don't think, because there's a timeline from 32 years ago to now. When we were defeated, that opened the door for zero hours contract, for starvation wages, for people like Mike Ashley, who uses immigrant labour via agencies, doesn't pay them the national minimum wage, People like him are as a result of our strike being lost all those years ago. Now I've got a 13 year old grandson. We said 32 years ago, we're fighting for future generations. I still am. I want him to have more of a future than sitting by a telephone, waiting for somebody to ring him and offer him a couple of hours work. We won't achieve that. Now I know we won't achieve that just by having a public inquiry. When we actually called for a public inquiry, we thought we were going to get a government of a totally different character. But we're in this fight now and we're in this fight to the finish. But ultimately, your fight, your magnificent fight for fast food workers, the magnificent Pennine workers struggle, who I had the honour of addressing their rally. Those fights are all our fights. Ultimately, we will only get justice, I think, not through a public inquiry, not through apologies in Parliament, but when we abolish this rotten system that throws people on the stones, that condemns people fleeing wars to drown in the Mediterranean and that calls people like me the enemy within. Comrades, we have a chance with a leadership like John and Jeremy Corbyn to achieve that. Something I, ne I thought we would never see in my lifetime. The ultimate justice will be revenge and building a decent society where working class people matter and it's people not profit. Thank you very much.